before I get into the topic of this video, I just really quickly want to address something uh, to those who are new to my channel and haven't seen my previous content. Um, this video isn't a hate on KDE Plasma or the developers for that matter, uh, but it's more so just kind of talking about the situation and whatnot. Um, and if you've seen my previous content, you'd know that I'm a KDE Plasma user myself. Uh, so yeah, no hate. But anyway, with that off to the side, um, essentially what this video is about is uh, recently I made a video talking about the Plasma 5.19 beta. And so right now I'm actually using uh, the unstable edition of KD Neon. Uh, so if you want to test it out for yourself, I'll leave that in the description. Um, but I do want to talk about the, once again, the direction that uh, the team has taken um, or is taking essentially uh, and kind of criticisms from the users um, and kind of talking about uh, bugs uh, compared to new features being added or really the visual designs, uh, which there's a lot of visual design changes that are going to be implemented and are being implemented. Um, and that's what their focus on is right now. And I think that's a good thing. And, and I'll talk about why that is. Um, but one thing that I saw in my comments and in other places as well, I'm going to demonstrate it really quickly is um, the notifications, for example. Now, really quickly off topic, I don't know why the text here is um, kind of grayed out. Hopefully that's not a bug. Uh, it would be funny if it is, but um, I do think that it kind of hurts the visibility. But anyway, as you can see, the new notifications, they have a title bar. They have um, a new design. If you've seen the old ones, uh, you could definitely tell. When it comes to the settings, they've uh, upped the settings and you can change for individual applications, um, what to do with the notifications. And there's the notification center here. So they've they've done a lot of improvements in the past two releases or so. And um, I forgot where I read it, but someone said instead of uh, focusing on, um, on the notifications, they could just fix bugs. Uh, so when it comes to bugs, I really quickly want to mention something. And that is a blog that I've recently saw, and this is a blog by Nate, who is one of the KDE developers. I don't know if he's going to want me to uh, show his blog or not, but whatever. So anyway, this is a, essentially a weekly blog where uh, he showcases the new features, the bug improvements, um, user interface improvements as well and uh, you can check it out for yourself I'm gonna leave it in the description um, and also it shows here if you want to contribute to the project how you can and if you want to also make a donation um, but a post that he made uh, I believe last week uh, really stood out to me because it essentially talks about this when it when it comes to uh, having a bug uh, and wanting it fixed and, you know, here's the bug tracker, for example. Uh, if, you, if you have a bug that's really annoying you, you, you could, of course, go ahead and submit it. But I, I know that it's pretty discouraging as a user uh, to have submitted a bug and let's say a couple months have passed and it's not fixed yet. Uh, but that's the thing when it comes to open source uh, in general, and that is that... You know, it's really good how everyone can go ahead and contribute to uh, the software, but if there's just nobody to really fix it, then it's not going to be fixed until there is someone to fix it. Um, and essentially, I believe the KDE developers would um, gladly have people come in and uh, help fix some bugs, uh, but that's the thing. Um, that's the thing with uh, open source software, you know. Um, I, and, and as far as I'm aware, uh, I do believe they are more loosely based than GNOME, for example, um, when it comes to their development. So uh, that's the thing, you know, if, if you have the programming skills, if you have the knowledge, it would be great to help. Um, but it can be difficult to just uh, focus on bugs. Uh, and every operating system, every desktop environment has bugs. Um, and it, it's just a, a tough thing to hand. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a tough thing to handle in general. Um, and so I the reason why I think it's good for them to focus on the visuals is for the following reason. Now, what you're looking at here really quickly is 
uh, these are essentially this is essentially a mock-up of uh, what they're striving to make it look like and so as you can see there's a new menu here uh, and the breeze style is also improved and updated and um, the reason why I think that this right here is important is because uh, take a look at it deepen for example um, it's filled with bugs <laughs> I mean, uh, it's it's not that usable, to be honest, as a daily driver. And uh, despite that, it's pretty popular, especially among uh, Linux beginners. And that is because it looks uh, polished at first glance and it looks modern. And I think that a lot of people have made comments on KD Plasma saying that it looks kind of, that the defaults right here look kind of outdated. Some people don't like that. Um, and it has the features, it has a lot of features, um, it has some powerful software, um, but I do think that um, if they were to want to uh, appeal to more uh, users, that this is a good uh, approach. And uh, moving forward, I mean, uh, with this next release or two, uh, with them implementing this, I think it's good to just get it out of the way, uh, because once you are able to make it look more polished, then uh, you can worry about adding new features, uh, fixing bugs and especially now with uh, Plasma 6 and also QT6 um, uh, that are going to be released um, it's going to be really interesting to see that um, so that's why I think that when it comes to the whole visual aspect and what, what they've been doing I think that it's 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 good uh, for them to get this out of the way and uh, make it look more sleek and um, then once it comes to the bugs, um, they have been, it's not like they haven't been fixing any bugs or not adding any features, but then they can put even more um, effort on that once that's taken care of. So that's that's basically the, my whole opinion and stance, I guess, on, on this whole thing. Uh, but one thing that I do want to, I guess, uh, shed some light on uh, some annoying bugs that have been um, existing for a while. Uh, Again, this isn't to show that KD is bad or anything. Um, it's more so just to kind of um, show what some of the users are uh, talking about. So here on the desktop, I have two images. Uh, and let's kind of zoom in here or make that full screen. And as you can see, this is a GDK application. This is GIMP. Um, and for some reason, I, I think... I'm not quite sure, but I think this might be GDK2. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but I did read somewhere that that's the reason why um, it doesn't blend in well because uh, what KDE Plasma does when it comes to G uh, GDK applications is it blends in the color schemes. And as you can see, especially when it comes to having text and you know even the icons here, uh, it looks really bad. Um, and it makes um, a lot of stuff unreadable and... This is just um, a pretty bad visual bug that has been existing for a while. It also applies to uh, Audacious, which um, I'm fairly certain that's GDK2 as well. Uh, so that's been going on for, I believe, maybe even over a year, as far as I can tell. Uh, another thing, uh, this is... I guess more applicable to laptops, I guess. Uh, so if you don't move your mouse for a while, you're... Um, screen kind of dims down uh, and so I can't really showcase this on the recording but essentially um, I'm going to maybe try to replicate it but once the screen uh, dims down if you move your mouse exactly the moment it dims down um, then it, it stays it stays like that it, your screen essentially s stays dark until you have to manually uh, increase the brightness as well so hopefully uh, with video editing effects I could uh, visualize that um, one thing that I've noticed as well is uh, and I've brought this up in my previous video uh, this one's a, a smaller bug uh, but if we go ahead and go to the workspace behavior screen locking and if we disable the clock, so let's lock the screen, try to log in. As you can see, the clock is still here. Um, so that's been a bug that hasn't really been fixed. Uh, when it comes to the applications, for example, like uh, their uh, music player, Elisa, 
uh, the playlist shows uh, double entries sometimes um, when it comes to high DPI support now here's the thing when it comes to high DPI in general with Linux there's bound to be bugs um, but sometimes uh, some certain things don't scale uh, just as you would expect uh, with Kmail uh, what, what is it called Akinati or whatever um, I believe the bug was more so related to Google not allowing the um, the server access uh, but essentially it was it was kind of difficult uh, getting uh, my mail set up I, I tried using Kmail uh, it didn't really work out for me um, and here are two things that are pretty big in my opinion so let me try to get this to work um, but as you may know KD has um, a thing called KD connect and so I'm gonna try to pair here but my Wi-Fi is kind of slow if it doesn't work I'm just gonna kind of explain it uh, let's see okay there we go so if you try to send a file so once you've paired up with your phone if you try to right click on a file and you send it to your device I'm not gonna do this because it might freeze my uh, system but it has happened multiple times and my system just straight up freezes um, and sometimes I have to restart it sometimes it takes up to a minute to um, get back to normal so that has been a bug and also when it comes to you can also um, edit uh, or not edit but you can control the media player through your phone as well that also sometimes bugs up um, that has been occurring for months as far as um, I'm aware from my personal experience and another thing that sucks in general no matter the desktop environment I feel like uh, are MTP devices so again I'm just going to visualize this I'm going to go to my pictures folder and as you can see you can't really see the preview of these images I've disabled it um, but when it comes to connecting your phone and you let's say you want you're looking for a picture you, you can't really see the picture unless you have to load it up manually um, and I don't know why previews of images can't be shown on MTB devices but uh, that happens um, and just in general sometimes getting it to connect I have to multiple times unplug and replug the cable um, to get it to work properly those have been uh, definitely some uh, annoying bugs but again uh, again the whole point of showing them and talking about them is if you're a developer if you have uh, the knowledge um, I showed here in the blog that was listed uh, if you want to help and get involved with the project uh, you can I'm going to leave that in the description below um, but yeah that's uh, that, that's basically it in general again I'm going to show the mock-up here it looks pretty good so um, I'm looking forward to the following releases again when it comes to the desktop it's it's good in my opinion it can always uh, have room for improvement and it can always be better so hopefully um, you know more people join in and start fixing some uh, long-standing bugs so that was basically it for this video hopefully uh, I shed some light on um, the whole situation I suppose um, hopefully you found it interesting or useful or whatever <laughs> um, but yeah that was basically it and uh, yeah thanks for watching